Hi, I'm Michael Bookwalder, and today you join me at Thurston Lake in Milton Keynes. It's a bit of a throwback for me, Thurston Lake. It's kind of where all my feeder fishing started back in probably the early 90s, 95, 96, sort of latest point. Come here today basically because we've just got back from Serbia from the World Champs last week. Really didn't want to go match fishing at all, so when Matt suggested a day out filming, just doing some nice fishing, no pressure, Thurston Lake was the ideal place for me to come. It's like going back. 15, 20 years. The fishing somewhat changed a lot of Thurston here. Years ago, you'd go on the pole, catch 15, 20 pound of roach, and there weren't many skimmers to be caught. But maybe 10 years ago, it changed, it's a massive bream explosion. They went ballistic, massive 60, 70, 80 pound weights, and it's changed again now. The venue used to be coloured, and now, as you can see in the water, it's gin clear now, and loads and loads of Canadian pond weeds started to grow. So the venue's changed again, so it's nice for me to come back and fish it. I've read reports lately that the fishing's been tough, oh, I can't catch any bream, there's no bream, no bites to be had. We've come here, we've fished for about an hour and a half so far. I put 10 bait up falls at the start, out at like 45, 50 metres, just a pure ground bait. I've just used a sensors black skimmer and feeder with gross guards on added to it, just to try and make a bit of an active mix. I fed that, gone out there with just casters to start with and started catching roach and perch. I've had a fantastic day's fishing, basically I had a bite of chuck. So, Everyone's saying there's no bites to be had. Maybe they're fishing bigger baits, pellets and corn and stuff like that. But I've gone old school today. I've gone basically some casters, some worms, and just a handful of uh, maggots. That's basically all I've needed, really. I didn't any worms at the start, just fish caster, try and get some bites. The fishing's been absolutely brilliant. Loads of fish have been caught. Fished quite negative, really. I fished a 013 OptiPower as a hook length and a size 14 B560. And anyone that knows me knows that's my go-to hook for everywhere. Kept it real simple on the rod. Got a 12 foot Ultra 2. Not the SUV, just the standard one because I think that's a fantastic rod for this kind of fishing up to about 45, 50 meters. There's a slight breeze today, but the, the one ounce tip gives me great bites. So what I'm doing today, I'm not fishing a running rig. Because I'm fishing 50 meters and the wind's a bit funny and there's a chance of a big bream, I fished it conventionally as an old paternoster. Just a three inch, four inch loop and last lasso my line above that and just a 45 gram window feeder. What I've tried to do today is basically have a day's fishing. Not try to catch those of bream, just wanted to come here, get some bites and catch some fish that don't stab you with spikes everywhere and catfish you haven't got to scourge for half an hour. So it's been a great day, a real basic back to, back to basics day. Just sat there, every time I fed or it's gone a bit funny, I've literally put a pinch of worms that big in just to try and kickstart the peg. What I'm scared about is there can be or used to be loads of perch in first and when they came in your peg you kind of never caught any skimmers or roach in that so I'm trying to avoid putting too many worms in for that reason. I'm going to have a go in a little while and start putting a few worm bombs in just to try and see if it does because the match angling myself I can't help but keep trying to do a few things and try to chop and change things even though we're having a, a restful pleasure day as such and doing a bit of content and filming of some new products I can't help but try and force the peg a little bit. So I'm going to put some worm bombs in and try and catch that. But some of the perch have been up to 10 ounce really. It's been great, great fishing. Real wise, just gone for a, a Parabolics Black Edition, three and a half thousand. It's a great little reel really. Not fishing mega distances, so it's got some cranking power. You can hook the fish, point at them with their perch or roach and reel them in. And it's still got, a, still got the power to pull in a big bream. I've had one today probably mm, getting on for five pound. And just to show them, this is the wee we're dealing with today. It's literally, every time you hook a fish, roach, perch, it's coming through. But a top tip, I learned this a few years ago in Ireland, a lot of the River Urn has this everywhere. And you watch people reel in, they hook up, and they're oh, trying to strike through it. When you do it, we'll get some footage of it, you hook into the weed, you sit there, and you hold the rod, you tighten right down as tight as you can go, and you hold it. And what happens is the feeder moves, and it eventually cuts through it. It's by striking and trying to pull through it, you lose the fish. You literally have to... It sounds really stupid, get real tight on it and just hold the rod, a massive bend and wait and the fish will kick the other end and basically almost like seesaw through it, cuts it. So that's been a quite a good learning curve and a bit of practice. I'm off to Ireland again in September and no doubt a lot of the river system over there will be full of pondweed. So I'm going to chuck out again now, catch some more fish and we'll show you some more little tips.
First thing I'm going to talk to you about is uh, the MAP Q-tip protection case. I know a lot of guys will say, well, it's not needed, we just chuck them in the bag and that, but when you're fishing at an elite level, fishing festivals in Ireland, world championships, you're carrying an awful lot of tips about. So I'm going to get a few laughs now when I show this. This is my tip case. I'm quite organised on my tip case, as you can see. I carry them all in small tubes that they come with when you buy them from MAP. I carry all different sizes, four or five of each. And when you're fishing places like this and the wind picks up on a big open place, if you haven't got the four or five rods set up, as a lot of people can't afford to have four or five rods set up at the time, you can change tips easy. I have it quite closely behind me. I can literally undo my shock leader, take the old tip out, put a new tip in. But if I didn't have a selection with me here, I wouldn't be able to do it. So a massive, massive part of my fishing is having this organised. I've seen top anglers on the bank in, in Feeder Masters finals and have a tip case. It's an absolute jumble sale and they're spending 10 minutes looking for a tip and stuff like that. I know exactly where mine are. I've got quarter ounces, half ounces, one ounces. This side I've got one ounce, two ounce, two and a half. Big tips, small tips, long tips. I know where everything is. So for me, it's a big part of my feeder fishing is being prepared. And this for me is being prepared. I'm a lot of money in here. It's the same material as on the rod bags and the pole cases. It's rock hard. You can almost stand on that. So you've probably got best part of, I don't know, a thousand pounds worth of tips in this case. So why wouldn't you want the best possible protection you can get? And with that Q-tip case, that's what we designed. It's designed by people like me who want to go feeder fishing, fish world championships, fish big festivals, and be as well prepared as possible. For me, it's an absolute no brainer that. All right, just look to fish quickly. i will talk to you about shock leaders now. A bit of a fad at the moment. Everywhere you look is people fishing braid direct better bite indication stuff like that and don't get me wrong there is a time and a place for it but places like here at Thurston where like prime example I told you a minute ago about catching the weed in the way in so I'm absolutely the fish is weeded now so rather than going doosh, 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 I've got a, a 10 pound shock leader on so I'm going to tighten right down to it put the butt of the rod into here hand there we're probably going to lose it but you're putting a real tight pressure on like real 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 not moving it just pulling it waiting for the line and the fish to cut through if I was to rip that now, I'm just going to pull out the fish. So you've got to keep constant pressure. I'm bound to lose my whole setup now because it's just going to weigh the curse of the camera works. There it goes, look. Just keeping constant pressure. Only a bunny small fish. Just going to pull through it. The shock lead's just come through. Heard it come down? It's here. Shot knots on there. So look, there's only a perch, but look at the weed coming through with it. Six ounce perch. But if I'd have ripped its head off there and tried to crank it through, it's only hooked on the outside of the lip. I'd lost him. And this is what you're, you're pulling through, like we just spoke about there. By having a shock leader of £10, when the fish is kicking the other end and doosh, 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 if I braid straight through, you're going to rip the hook out, especially if you've got a bream or something. With the shock leader, I've still got that big cushion. I've got a six metre shock leader on, so there's going to be a, maybe a metre of stretch over that when you time got compressed right down to it. So for me, you need to pick your shock lead and stuff depending on where you're fishing. For a fishing place like Southfield maybe, where there's no weed, no snags, then braid direct is an easy, easy choice. But here at Thurston where there's loads of pond weed and, and could be snags around, like trees, roots and stuff like that, I always fish a shock lead and me. I just feel that it gives me that bit more security to try and get the fish in. So let's get loaded, get back out and try and catch another big one. That's how quick that bite was, that still baiting the feeder. That proves me I'm squeezing it in too hard again but I'm getting a bit excited getting a few bites now, so it's good fishing. So I'll get back out there. As always, try and hit the clip quite hard. I don't see the point in hitting a clip really softly. I want to try and get it all straightened out, get the bait turned over. As always, tip under the water. Let's hit the bottom now, so I'm just tightening up. I'm holding my rod now, so if I get a bite, I'll feel it. The tip's probably a foot under the water now. Got quite a bit of width, a bit of breeze, so the toe's taking it around there, so you're you tight straight away. So you're going to see, even with a six meter shock leader, you're going to see the bite. Most of the bites there have been off the rest, so it's been been real good bites today. No, no worry, you could probably fish three ounces and still see the bites here. So it's been one of them days where, like that, straight away. Another perch now. Seems to have been, since I put that worm bomb in, an explosion of perch. They're, they're not worth catching like people start trying to not catch perch try and avoid them but you're catching a six ounce fish every 
two or three minutes, why would you avoid trying to catch them? It just makes zero sense for me. I've always worked on the pretense. If I catch one six ounce fish, you've got to catch one and a bit more to beat me. Hence the reason I catch a lot of fish. Uh, it's caught 12 ounces in two minutes. Like I say, that's a, a skimmer on most venues where I've had just to chuck it out. Oh, the fish. Best thing about fishing for perch. Got worm. Going to go empty feeder now. People discount empty feeder. They think you need to feed every single cast of feeder, but you don't. You wouldn't feed every ball of ground bait every single chuck on the on the pole, would you? So I don't see why you would try and do it on the feeder. You've got to try and work your peg. And having a few empty casts here and there definitely, definitely does it no harm. In Serbia last week, the best way to catch catfish was to have two or three quick casts and then have five or six casts with an empty feeder and just drag it. And obviously they feel by movement and stuff and the bait and noise. So that was the best way to catch them. And you overfilled them really, really quickly. I mean, perch are pretty much the same kind of fish. They are really, really, really aggressive feeders. They come in your peg, they smash everything and go. So by maybe having a couple of casts of empty feeder, you're not gonna fill them up as quickly. It's different today because we're pleasure fishing, so it's probably gonna be a fair amount of fish keep coming through the pegs and no one else fishing on a great big lake. But in a match situation, obviously try and optimize what's in your peg and by doing that every now and then, it definitely, definitely works. Especially as you can't fish a straight lead now. Obviously in feeder masters rules, you can't fish a lead during a match. But if it was a, a normal open, you could fish pole net. Rather than fishing empty feed, I could put straight lead on because it makes a different sound as it goes in. So there's all these little trip tricks and uh, twitches and stuff. And the biggest thing there, perch fishing, everyone always told me don't move the feeder. Perch are sight feeders, movement. That's what they want. Different for bream and stuff and that, you tend to leave it a bit longer. But when there's a load of perch in your peg, you miss the bite and look really, really daft on camera. All right, we'll do another worm bomb now, see if we can really get them going. We're coming towards the end of the session now. We've both got to go back to the head office and have a bit of a meeting and catch up about some new products. So quickly explain the end of the session. I put two or three worm bombs in. They've not really made the difference today. I thought it was better going back to just putting, just cast now, darkened right off now. So, yep. I said no worm bomb didn't work, I had a bite on it, look. Not a massive fish again. It's going to be a, a perch or something, but a really, really enjoyable day's fishing. It's not all about going out and catching big weights of barim. It's about just going back to basics today and catching, having a day's fishing, really. No pressure from a world champs. Apart from all this weed, we've hooked again. Look, again, we'll try and explain to you, keeping that real slow pressure. It's coming slowly, literally, it's an inch at a time. Not a big fish, but we want to get it out if we can. Feel it kicking. Every time it kicks, it's like seesawing through the the pondweed, hopefully. Let it come there, cut through a bit. Probably gonna lose this one now, it's just very, very deep in. No, right, there it comes. It's a lot of pressure, I mean, it just shows you how much pressure you can put through a 12 foot feeder rod. Here you go, you'd be a match, what well, weed's coming in here now, look. That is what you're dealing with. But if I'd have gone mad again, it's not coming in. So difficult fishing, but enjoyable fishing and quite rewarding fishing. And to be fair, they're a beautiful little fish you catch them with the clear water, these perch, you've got real vibrant colors. And they're a cracking little fish. I think we all caught a fish or a perch as the first fish. So I think with most of us anglers, a perch holds a special spot. So I'll put him back and we'll show you what we've caught for the day. There you go, spoils of a great day, going back to basics on a venue where I grew up on really. 20 pound of fish, great big bream there you see, five pound, some pound skimmers, loads and loads of these perch, six to eight ounce perch, fantastic days fishing. Go out, try some of the tips I've given you today, you too, and catch some fish like that, a cracking fish. Let's get them back nice and safe the way we like them.